Britain's Conservative Party is arguably the most successful political party of the modern age. The Tories, as they are also known, have ruled Britain for nearly 60 of the 90 years since 1929, the country's first election with universal adult suffrage. But this week, we watched the beginning of the end of the Conservative Party, at least as we have known it. In the post-World War II era, the Tories were defined by an advocacy of free markets and traditional values, a combination that was brought to its climax in the person of Margaret Thatcher, the Tories' most effective prime minister since Winston Churchill. This free market orientation made sense. The second half of the 20th century was dominated by one big issue, the clash between communism and capitalism. Throughout the world, parties aligned themselves on a left-right spectrum that related to that central issue, the role of the state in economics. In America in the 1950s and 60s, for example, the Democrats included northern progressives and southern segregationists, but they all agreed on the need for an interventionist state. We are now living in a new ideological era, one defined by an open-closed divide between people comfortable in a world of greater openness in trade, technology, and migration, and those who want more barriers, protections, restraints. You can see the breakdown of the old order by looking back at Britain's last five prime ministers, two from the Labour Party, three from the Tories. All were in favour of Britain staying in the European Union, including Theresa May originally. By contrast, Boris Johnson is remaking the Tories into the party of Brexit, and this week expelled 21 Conservative members of Parliament, including very senior figures who disagreed with the new party line. Of course, not every situation falls neatly on the open-closed spectrum. Many of the leading Brexiteers are staunch free marketeers, and they insist they want a global Britain. It's odd, however, to be in favor of free trade and yet insist that Britain crash out of the EU, one of the world's largest free trade areas and Britain's largest trading partner. But more significant is the fact that whatever the views of the new Tory leaders, the public that voted for Brexit and would presumably support what would essentially be a new Tory Brexit party, largely embrace a closed ideology. They're suspicious of foreigners, resentful of the new cosmopolitan Britain that they see in London and the country's other big cities. America, of course, has a similar constituency. While many of the Republican leaders who support Trump might well be free marketeers, his base is largely animated by the same suspicions and passions that motivated the Brexit voters. The most likely future for the Republican Party is one that conforms with its voters' preferences for limits on trade and immigration and even greater hostility toward big technology companies. In Britain, there's confusion on the other side of the aisle as well. The Labour Party has moved leftward and still contains elements that are skeptical about the European Union. Over time, Labour will probably move more robustly in a pro-Europe direction and with the Liberal Democrats try to create a new open governing majority. In America, the Democrats have to resolve similar differences, mostly around trade, an issue on which many Democrats are actually as protectionist as Donald Trump. But what is happening now in Britain is a telltale sign. One of the world's most enduring political parties is cracking. It's yet another reminder that we are living in an age of political revolutions. For more, go to cnn.com slash Farid and read my Washington Post column this week.